Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome on behalf of the United States Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, the U.S. Commercial and U.S. Trade Administration, the U.S. Commercial Service, and the United States Small Business Administration Office of International Trade, who are partnering today with the United States Hispanic Chamber of Commerce to bring you this strategic webinar titled Resources and Estrategias for Global Market Éxito. It's our honor and privilege to welcome each and every one of you here today as we have this robust panel and conversation to show our business members and respective constituencies how to do business in global markets, how to scale your business through business opportunities in a strategic way, and how to continue to take advantage of what is happening overseas and in other markets across the different hemispheres that we have access to in order to grow Hispanic business in America. At this time to start our small business exporter success story panel, it is my honor and privilege to introduce our moderator and good friend, Gabriel Esparza, who is the SBA's Associate Administrator for International Trade and serves at the Small Business Administration under the leadership of Administrator Isabella Casillas Guzman. Gabriel, welcome and thank you for being with us and your partnership with the USHCC. Thank you, Leroy. Thank you, Laura, and, and bienvenidos to everybody. Welcome to all of you uh, who are uh, U.S. Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, small businesses, Latinos, aspiring exporters. Bienvenidos a todos. It is a pleasure and an honor to be with you here today. Again, I'm Gabriel Esparza. I run the Office of International Trade for the SBA. And uh, instead of spending time talking about what we do at the SBA, I want to make sure you are hearing from real small businesses, real Latino small businesses, real Latino small businesses who are exporting and who have experience exporting. Because as each of us grows in our jobs, in our careers, in our businesses, uh, exporting and international trade, international sales is an important part of that journey. So instead of spending more time about the Office of International Trade, I'd love to introduce uh, and bring on to the discussion two small businesses, two Latino small businesses. And so let me introduce first Carlos Silva of USA Tech or USATEC, originally from Colombia. Carlos, bienvenidos. You're on mute, you're on mute. Thank you very much, uh, Good. Gabriel, for, for the opportunity to be here. Glad to be here. Muy bien. And then uh, I'd also like to introduce Ray Herrera uh, from Bodyceuticals and Three Volution Organics. Ray's got a whole slew of businesses and so many uh, small business experiences over the years. Um, and uh, second or third generation Mexican American, if I'm not mistaken, Ray, correct? Bienvenidos. Yes. Gracias. It's great. It's awesome to be here. Very good. Well, thank you both for joining us. We, we have. Uh, 15 or so minutes where we want to get into your experiences so we can share with the audience what your journey looked like. Uh, and so, Carlos, if we can start with you, I'd love to hear um, a little bit about your company, your business, and, and how it's grown. All right. Well, thank you. Yeah. Yes, USA Tech is a, a company that was um, created uh, back in 2010. Um, to export uh, heavy equipment for construction and mining application. And um, with one particular uh, uh, thing in there, and it is uh, one-stop shop sales. Uh, because in this case, there is a lot of uh, logistics and technical coordination and everything involved in that. So, yeah, that was the, the goal. We still work on that. And um, our focus is uh, yeah, earth moving machines for uh, construction and, uh, and mining applications. Yeah, um, we go after customers, mid sized and small size companies, yeah, um, mainly in Latin America. Yeah, and in my case, most of the activity is uh, with, uh, with Colombia. So, uh, the model that we have is uh, that at USA Tech, uh, 
every uh, each cell is considered a project and is managed as such. We, um, we understand the customer's specific equipment needs of heavy equipment, and um, we try to satisfy those um, by providing them with quality machines, competitive pricing, uh, reliable delivery times, and at the end, looking for uh, the overall satisfaction of the um, people involved in the process. Uh, in and, and, get... and let me just ask you, since it's such big equipment, are you putting that on a ship? How are you getting it overseas? Yes, most, okay. well, uh, everything that goes to, uh, um, most of the, the activity goes through the port of uh, Houston or uh, ports in the in the Florida or the East Coast, and they will ship, uh, but the equipment may be available anywhere in the United States. So it needs to be initially transferred over from one of the ports to the shipping port and then take it to the destination port of the car. Got it. Okay. Gracias, Carlos. We'll come back to you with the next question, but let me start with uh, Ray, turn it over to you. I suspect instead of heavy equipment and machinery, you're selling something else. So tell us a little bit about your business, Ray. And you're on mute. You're on mute. Sorry about that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so we're a little different. Yeah, we're not moving uh, heavy equipment. Um, but yeah, so uh, I own a company called uh, Three Volution Organics. We're a natural, uh, natural products broker uh, nationwide in the U.S. We represent over two, uh, two dozen different companies. Um, so we get our products, um, our client products on the shelf. So we work with Albertsons, Whole Foods, Sprouts, Publix, HEB, thousands of retailers. But we also have a company, one of the clients is essentially our own company called Bodyceuticals, which is a skincare line. It's a uh, calendula formulation. So calendula with aloe, calendula with coconut. Um, and we've got about 950 retailers here in the U.S. for our brand. And we started to look at international due to the pandemic. We seen that it didn't make a lot of sense to have all our eggs in the USA basket when we could start to look international. So I myself did a lot of interna international business about 12 years ago. Um, and I was, I was working with the US Department of, uh, of Trade. And what I found out was that there was way more support than there was 12 years ago. Um, so that was our reason for getting back into it, so to speak, for international. And subsequently, a lot of our clients um, are also interested in doing this. So we're kind of trying to build a pipeline where once we do it, we can kind of add other brands to the mix. Um, yeah. yeah. Now, I, I know you've got other experience, as you alluded to, of having exported in the past. So this is not your first rodeo, correct? That is correct. But there's so much more support now than there was 12 years ago. There was definitely a new learning curve. And you can get a lot more done now in a year than you could 12 years ago. So, yeah, it's gotten, it's gotten so, a lot better. So here's the interesting question, because so many of the uh, people in the audience who've joined us today as individuals, as small business owners, you know, bring their Latinidad to the table in this right. discussion. And so, Carlos, let me turn this back to you. You're originally Colombiano, first generation born in Colombia, correct? Yes, correct. Born so, and raised in Medellin. So when you first started thinking about exporting. Yes. Uh, what, Carlos, this is for you. Carlos, when you okay. first started exporting, um, how much did the fact that you were born and raised in Colombia, still know Colombia, presumably have familia todavía in Colombia. How did that play into your decision to start exporting? And was Colombia your first market? Absolutely, yes and yes. Um, the fact that uh, I had, you know, family, friends, relative, um, a lot of knowledge of the market and some things that were going on at the time it was a major uh, infrastructure development program uh, for uh, the entire country. Uh, that was an opportunity uh, to think through, to go over, and um, and that that was uh, that was what I what I initially uh, focused on to the point that uh, uh, began developing the business plan and the opportunities, knocking doors, and uh, 
on the um, on the customers, also on the vendors, and uh, put in place the business model to satisfy those needs uh, by Perfect. bridging, you know, sending the equipment from the states. And and as you grew and expanded beyond Colombia, mm -hmm. because of your bilingual, bicultural nature, was it then obvious and easier to export throughout Latin America or did you start going all of Europe and Asia and all over the place? Uh, the, the focus has been Colombia, but by doing so, there are some opportunities that arise here or there. Um, so it goes to Mexico, Guatemala or Panama or Dominican Republic or um, even Australia, Dubai. So we take care of the of any uh, any lead that we receive, and uh, doesn't matter what it is, as long as uh, we we could do it here, uh, we will work it out, and uh, that's what we've been doing. But most of the activity, the promotion, the marketing, if you would, is in um, Colombia. In, uh, in Colombia. Yeah. Good. Now, Ray. Alternatively, remind me, you are. Second generation or third generation? Your your parents or your abuelitos are me Mexicanos? My my parents, my mom parents. and my dad. Got yeah. it. Um, but you were born and grew up in the U.S. Right? Yes. All right. So when you started to export, was yeah. Mexico first choice or was it wherever you found a good market? Um, no, Mexico definitely wasn't the first choice. I ended up going... Um, with the with the countries that were, rec that were recommended by the RAISE program. That was a rural program at the time. And we essentially filled out information on the profile of our products. And four months later, we got a tiered list of 185 countries. And the top countries that came back, none of them were Mexico. So we <laughs> focused on the countries that were based, you know, solely on our ingredients our characteristic, our type of consumer. So yeah, we right. went a completely different different uh, uh, method, but it, it's, it's been amazing though. Yeah, and so, you know, it, the, the, this part of the discussion is interesting for so many of us because as we think about the Latino experience in the United States, mm -hmm. uh, there are folks who are arriving every day. There's first generation immigrant populations who still maintain very strong ties to uh, country of origin. And as uh, the Latino population uh, spends more and more time in the United States, second generation, third generation and beyond, of course, we know that, uh, you know, many of us have been here for, you know, over 100 years. In fact, the question is, how much of the focus remains on country of origin, or simply as you say, Ray, um, is wherever there seems to be a good opportunity. And, and my conclusion from this particular part of the discussion has been, you know, Carlos, you were born and raised in Colombia. You know the Colombia movida, you know how things get done, you know the people, the connections and so forth, the local flavor. And therefore it was much more easy for you to start in Colombia. Whereas Ray, you've got even just one generation removed and while you might be familiar with Mexico, familiar with the language, that's really your parents who are, are having that tie. And this is not, you know, two examples make a defining uh, a theory or thesis here, but it is at least anecdotal for us in these two cases to think about which generation of Latinos are uh, most poised to export back to country of origin. Sure. Let me turn, Carlos, to you on mm -hmm. uh, what the U.S. government, whether federal government, local government, state government, uh, has been helpful to you from a products and services standpoint, whether they're grants, whether they're loans, whether it's just consulting and advice, where have you engaged with the government to support your efforts in the growth of your business and in exporting? Well, this is a, a there are a lot of resources, wonderful resources that I have used and received help from different entities uh, from the federal government, state government, city government. Uh, um, very grateful for that. Uh, um, the U.S. Commercial Service with the Gold Key Service uh, received a lot of support from the um, 
uh, the SBDC, the uh, at San Antonio International Trade Center at San Antonio. Let's yeah, remind people of, of some of these acronyms. Sorry to interrupt you. The SBDCs are the Small Business Development Centers. Go ahead. Yes, correct. Yeah, with the International Trade Center in, in San Antonio, yeah, um, I'm a member of the Texas Camino Real. The, uh, uh, there is also uh, some uh, of the deck, uh, some support from there. Uh, the MBDA, the Minority Business Development Agency, uh, all of them have great support uh, resources for, for exporters uh, in terms of advice, in terms of uh, uh, customers' information that is uh, valuable, and the Gold Key service to open the door, um, et cetera. Uh, the grant, we've used the STEP grant. Um, Let's just, that STEP stands for State Trade Expansion Program. So the STEP grant. Yes, yes correct. That is uh, funded, <laughs> thank you, um, by the, by the, um, by the federal government, the SBA, yep. correct. So, so those tools, those resources are, are, are wonderful elements that help us develop uh, our activity, uh, promote our products, uh, um, even participate in meetings, uh, some of them virtually, some more in person, uh, um, you name it. But I would say, I, I would, most most of the resources that are available, I have used them uh, at some point during our 13 years of, of uh, activity at the company. And this has helped you either as advice and counsel or financing or stimulus grants. They've all been helpful in your journey as a small business and as an exporter. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So then, Ray, what about you? What if, where has your engagement with the government been relative to the products and services that have helped your business? Yeah, so um, I, I really kind of have to give a couple of shout outs. Um, one of them is Simona Rasek, who's been my international trade business advisor. Uh, Richard Swanson, who's with the U.S. Department of Commerce and recently Marianne Burktick over that position. These are all they, folks in the Los Angeles region, correct? That That is correct. They've right. been literally like spearheading a lot of, they've been assisting me a lot. So the services, the, the very first service I took advantage was the RAISE program, which I mentioned earlier, which is the Rural America's Intelligence Service for Exporters. This is where you put down criteria on the products that you're trying to uh, export. Um, and the indicators could be uh, economic, uh, trade data, trade compatibility, ease of doing business, how easy is it to get your trademark, how long does it take to get approved in the country. So based on all of these things that you list, I think it's like 25 or 30 different markers, then you get a list of the top countries to start pursuing. And then after that, I started doing the global market research programs for each of those top countries. Um, and so what that does is it gets it allows you to drill down a little more granular so you can start to set up meetings with specific distributors specific retail chains that are interested in products like the ones that you're offering and so that has been really really advantageous on the support side the step grants which you know obviously we talked about that earlier the state uh trade expansion programs um which for for us in california just doubled I just got the news two days ago that it went from 5K to 10K, which is amazing because, um, you know, you that cost can go towards your sampling. It can go towards your trademark approval. It can go towards your uh, approval into a country. Um, for instance, we used our step grant funds last uh, November um, to start the approval process for uh, the UAE and for Canada. So those are just two examples. That's perfect. Um, That's perfect. Yeah, which, it sounds like you've used the whole gamut. <laughs> that is exactly right. And so it, it it helps with trade shows, social media, marketing, sampling. I mean, you name it, it covers a lot of a lot of things. The other program that we took advantage of is WUSADA, which is the Western United States Agriculture uh, Agricultural Trade Association. And this wouldn't uh, this wouldn't fit for all brands, but if your products are over 50% produced in the US or cultivated in the US, you can uh, you can get approved for this program. And this program is even better than the SEP program because this will cover, it will fund match your marketing. So it'll cover 50% of the, 
of all of your marketing expenses. That's trade shows, print material, social media, marketing, uh, labeling, uh, packaging, uh, things like that. So, I mean, those four things have been like our kind of like our war chest. Perfect. Because Perfect. With, with these services, we've been able to get in front of the right distributors, start the process on getting approvals, working on trademarks, um, even on the financial side and logistics. So it's been incredible. So as, as we wrap up with the two of you, um, I'd love to hear, as we always ask during these discussions, what's the one piece of advice, Carlos, we'll go back to you. What's the one piece of advice that you have for a small business, perhaps on this call, um, that uh, would, as they're thinking about selling in global markets, what would you say, Carlos? Well, there are, there are many things that I would like to say <laughs> um, on that. Yeah. But there is one that it is absolutely essential when you're doing a national business. And is you probably want to use WhatsApp. And, and I <laughs> mentioned it point. because in the United States, you don't use WhatsApp. Mm -hmm. People don't know what that thing is. Right? So marketing what? channels, communication channels, and WhatsApp in particular in Latin America, you said is... Oh, yeah important for you anywhere in the world anywhere Very in the good. world and it is it is essential just for one thing to facilitate access to decision makers the people that you need to talk to very good this is the best way to get in very good ray what about you that that was a really great point about whatsapp uh, there's been a few scenarios where i've emailed a distributor or a retail chain and they won't email me back they'll WhatsApp me back. And I was like, how mm -hmm. did they even get my information? But of course they got my phone number. So, so that's actually a really, really good point. Well, um, you are, you are I'll keep going if you got another one. Yeah. So I would, I would say the first step is two things. I, I, I guess first two things would be try to attend as many of these seminars as you can, because I've gotten a lot of really great information from these types of meetings. And the other thing is to identify specifically who your U.S. Department of Commerce contact is and who your SBDC contacts are and get them on a first name basis. If you can drive out or fly out to meet them, I highly recommend it. And you mentioned you mentioned your two in L.A., Simona and Ray, yep. correct? Yeah, Very they've good. been I mean, it's been incredible. It really, really has. They know all of the forks and hurdles that you're going to run into they know about them before they're going to happen and they'll put you in touch with the right people to make sure that you see them coming. Um, well, let me simply say, uh, as we wrap up this portion of the conversation, uh, a big thanks to both of you, Carlos and Ray, uh, for sharing your journey, your experience. Clearly you've got not only wise marketing minds, uh, but have very much taken advantage of the products, resources and services of the federal government, state government and so forth. And I'll just remind our audience that at the SBA and the Office of International Trade, we have three principal areas in which we can support the growth and development of your international and exporting business. The first is uh, education and training. These types of discussions, as well as uh, other direct interactions with people, consulting and advice that uh, can help you think about what it means to grow internationally. Second would be access to capital, right? Uh, financing loans and working capital lines that help fuel your business through this financing. Uh, and then the third would be some of the stimulus grant programs that were mentioned, in particular through the SBA, the STEP program, State Trade Expansion Program. This is money, about $20 million a year that the federal government through the SBA Office of International Trade puts to work to reimburse small businesses for their export related expenses. So some of the things you mentioned, Ray and Carlos, trade show expenses, translating your website, market research, patent protection, these are expenses that can be reimbursed uh, through the State Trade Expansion Program or STEP. I encourage you all to uh, find your local SBA representative. There are 68 district offices around the country, but of course it is not just us. It is the Small Business Development Center Network, the agriculture department that you talked about, Ray, and as perhaps the segue to introducing my friend Jose Burgos, the U.S. Commercial Service as well. So many agencies across the federal government. So if we can bring up Jose, um, let me again end this by saying thank you, Carlos. 
Thank you, Ray. Uh, congratulations and keep up the good work, keep growing. And now let me turn it over to Jose Borgos, Director of Puerto Rico U.S. Export uh, Center for the U.S. Commercial Service. Thank you, Gabriel. Good afternoon, everyone. I, I hope everyone is doing well. Um, I'm going to be discussing, I'm based in Puerto Rico. My name is Jose Burgos. They also call me Pepe. As good Hispanic, we all do have a nickname. Uh, I cover Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands. Uh, I'm, I'm a Stamalum office here in Puerto Rico. So my, I'm, my main goal here in Puerto Rico is to support companies that are looking forward to expand to international markets. So a lot of the services that had been uh, mentioned here, I'm going to be just do a, a brief description of, of the services that we do have. But uh, like it's been encouraged to contact your local threat specialist. We have uh, an office in, in all of the states of the US, including Alaska, uh, Hawaii. Uh, I personally cover Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands, but we're here to help to support your needs to export to international markets. Uh, so, um, so one of the main service that two are two of the main service that we do provide in the US commercial service uh, and this service is also included all, all the domestic offices. That means they are the U.S. Uh, offices. Uh, it, one of the most popular one is the Gold Key service in which we do matchmaking with uh, with potential uh, distributors, uh, could be uh, government entities, uh, different uh, agencies or contacts overseas. And we're, we're able to get you up to four to five companies. And in that service, the purpose is to have the right contact. And usually when one of our foreign offices contact a local distributor or a company and that call comes from the US embassy, they really take it seriously. So we have a lot of, of leverage uh, in order to get those appointments. Uh, usually most of the companies that we would get for the clients are being uh, already checked by the, our local staff. So a good and reliable companies with good standing. So we just want to make sure we get you into the right context. So that, that's the goal key service. Um, if we, we have clients sometimes in which they can reach a lot of uh, clients. So a one day or two day of goal key service is not going to be enough. Uh, we usually suggest what is called the single company promotion. And with the single company promotion, what we do is uh, it's like a sales pitch. So we coordinate a, a, a breakfast. And in that breakfast, what we do is to uh, have you present either your service or your products in order to, uh, to present it to the, the companies that will be inviting to that event. So in that event, pretty much uh, what we do is to, for you to have the opportunity to uh, present either your products or your service. And, and we usually recommend either a breakfast or, or it could be a reception most of the time in Latin America. As Latinos, we like most more uh, to have uh, a breakfast. It's usually more well attended, and it, it would be a good way to reach from 15 to 20 to 30 uh, companies uh, at once. So it's it's one of our good services. If uh, you want something more simple, we can provide you a contact list. Let's say you want a, a group of uh, local supermarkets because you have a, a put in the products that you would like to to receive. Uh, we can get you a, a, up to 20 companies from the country and we provide that service to you and, and the company just reach those potential companies. And then sometimes that follow up with a, an, a gold key or one-on-one -on -one appointments over, over there. Uh, beside those services, we also have one that's called initial market check. So if by any chance you are interested in, in one specific uh, market, um, but our colleagues in that market are not really sure or aware that you will have an, a chance in that opportunity. What we do either with our colleagues from the State Department or the Commercial Service, uh, they, uh, they would check with several companies They will contact from six to eight companies to see if your service and products will have a demand or a good opportunity to enter into that market. So that's what it's called initial market check. So we kind of check if you will have a chance. So we don't want to be honest, we don't want to waste anyone's money and time. So if, if, your, if your products or service would not be fitting or fit for that market, we will let you know as well. Uh, we also do market research as well. We have free information that you can find in the country commercial guide, which are uh, guides. Uh, uh, if you go to export.gov slash 
at, uh, or sorry, at trade.gov slash CCG, which means country commercial guy, you would get a lot of free information that our colleagues overseas work very hard every year to update that information. And that's the first thing I always recommend. We do also customer market research. Uh, those services do have a cost, but it's gonna depend how, how difficult, how the spec or how much information it's needed uh, uh, for either could be like, what is your competition? What is your uh, labeling requirements or uh, permits? Anything that you need that require more specific information that you need a full report, that's something that uh, the agency can provide as well. If by any chance uh, a company from overseas uh, are not going to contact you and they want to do business with you, but you're not really sure should I do or should not do business with that company, we have one, comp one service called the the, single, uh, the International Company Profile in which through our coworkers, uh, we do an investigation of that company. That investigation can be done anonymous. So they're not aware of, of that you're asking for that. Uh, I do have a lot of clients that have requested this service and they feel a little bit embarrassed uh, of, uh, you know, let them know the company that they're investigating that say, should, you should not be embarrassed. Just tell this, uh, company requirement but it's a good way that you find out if the company it's a good standing company a solid company so you would not be working with a company that is not a better reliable or would not pay you in time um we also had the, the advocacy center which is a group of lawyers uh in dc it's free it's not that they're going to charge you 300 dollars an hour or 400 dollars uh but they can help you if, uh, for example you're attending to uh participate from a, a procurement with the Let's use an example, the Panama Canal administration. So they will make sure that all the documentation is it's well filled and, co and correct in order to have a US company get that procurement instead of a foreign company winning that bet. Uh, if for some reasons uh, you are exporting either a product or service and then someone asks you for money under the table or you, you notice something legal, that's when the advocacy center also can get involved in order to uh, make sure uh, to protect your interests overseas. Uh, and the last program that I want to discuss quickly, I hope I'm not going over my time, uh, is the Globalizing Your Website. That's a program, it's, it's, it's the newest one in the, in the agency in which we, we uh, coordinate this with Jane Bledsoe, he's based in Seattle, Washington. And what we do is we take each of the company web pages and we use two algorithms in order to determine how many mistakes the company website have. Uh, so we also copy and paste the, the, the website completely and check with in, in Chinese, Arabic, and, and what was the other one? Chinese, Arabic, and German. And if using Google Translator, if we are able to translate the page correctly, that's a good sign. Another common mistake that company they do with the websites, and I'm sorry if anyone in this code do have the website like that, it's either they use Gmail, Hotmail instead of the company domain, uh, because that can provide like not a sense of like this is a real company when they see a Gmail or a Hotmail. So try to always have that domain with the company domain. Uh, another important thing, have a website. Uh, you will be surprised how many companies contact me. And when I ask you, what, where's your website? They don't have one. So I'm like, what? Really? And you want to export? Uh, another common mistake, it's they tend to have the famous sales ad and then the name of the company or info ad and the name of the company. So always try to have someone's name. Could be the receptionist name uh, to make sure that that communication feel more personal. Uh, so, but... If anyone is interested in the globalizing your website, it's like $100. Uh, we will work this service with your local trade specialist at the commercial service and Jane Bledson. And what we do, uh, once the service is paid, uh, the trade specialist will uh, reply and work on, on your case. And then it, it will be determined uh, in uh, a date in which with Jane Bledson, they will give you a complete briefing of the mistakes that they found in your website, uh, recommendation of social media, create a, a video on YouTube, uh, and how you can have your company name in search engines more quicker when someone looks for X or Y, y company. Uh, but also, uh, like I'm bilingual, uh, we have a lot of people in the agency that are bilingual. Uh, uh, our staffers in Latin America, of course, they speak Spanish. 
Uh, but if for some reason you want to do business in Portugal, we, we have our colleagues that speak Portuguese, so we have translators, interpreters, sorry. Uh, but yeah, we, uh, uh, as you can see, this is the only slideshow that I have in Spanish. We used to have information in Spanish. Unfortunately, uh, I checked with, with Commerce and they had not come back with like, like all Spanish information. Uh, but uh, if anyone from the state uh, need to talk to me uh, because it's needed to be in Spanish, I'm always help here uh, available to, to respond to any of your questions and put you with the right context uh, of our agency. Well, thank you. If anyone have any questions, I'm glad to, to follow up later. Oh. Let's turn now to Ed Schick, SBA. Oh, okay, okay. Gracias, Pepe. Uh, sure. Really great information. Uh, buenas tardes, everybody. Just in case, boa tarde, todo mundo. Aos ouvintes que falam português. Just wanted to get that in there. Good afternoon. My name is Ed, Ed Schick. I'm actually located in Pittsburgh, not in Rio. And I, am, I work in the Office of International Trade that's lead, led by our Illustre uh, Gabe. Uh, I am what we call an export finance manager. There are about 20 of us throughout the country. So wherever you are, uh, there is one of me there. So uh, later in the presentation, you will have a, a list of all us, uh, all where we're located so you can reach out to us. So just a quick, I just wanted to say quickly where, where I come from. I've been in international banking and international business as well for the past 25 plus years. Uh, I've supported US businesses selling globally. I've supported foreign businesses buying from the US. So my area of expertise, you know, ranges from the both sides of the aisle and uh, also my area, my region of expertise is Latin America. I've done business in countries like Colombia, Mexico, Brazil, Costa Rica, Dominican Republic. So just about, just about anywhere, from anywhere from heavy equipment to medical equipment to franchises, you know, a Wendy's or a McDonald's in the countries we, you know, we've helped finance. So just to, uh, to move along, I, we have an interesting, uh, interesting person coming up. Uh, I think it was really interesting how this is formatted because we, we've spoken about the companies, the company perspective, how they look at global. But of course, in order for them to succeed, we need to have some financing. So I am privileged to introduce to you uh, a colleague of mine. Uh, her, na her name is Noha Galal. She's a senior vice president at Truist Bank. Uh, Noah, are you, Noha, are you there? Yes, hi Ed, thank you. Introduce yourself, tell people what you do. Thanks, thanks Ed. It's, it's really a pleasure to be part of this uh, very impactful and resourceful forum. So thanks for inviting me. My name is Noha Galal and I'm a relationship manager with Truist Corporation within their middle market team in Greater Washington. Um, I've spent the past 25 years of my career in banking and focusing on international banking and helping companies U U.S. companies, small and medium-sized companies get financing to help open markets overseas for themselves or global subsidiaries open U uh, offices for themselves in the U.S. as well. Um, for, for those of you who do not know Truist Bank, it's the merger of two banks, BB&T Corporation and SunTrust Bank, making it the sixth largest U.S. commercial bank, and it's a participant in the SBA's expert working capital preferred lender program. Great. Thanks, Great. Ed, for the introduction. No, thank you. Thank you. Very interesting. So, no, we heard uh, two companies discuss, uh, uh, you know, discuss how they, they looked at exporting. So, as a bank, since you're the bank, from a bank perspective, as the lender, what are some of the characteristics you look for uh, when you want to support a small business as they want to grow or are growing internationally with their exports? Sure, sure, Ed, a great question. So, but, but the answer is really simple here. The majority of the requirements that we have, whether Truist or other financial institutions would have, would align with what we look for generally when we're looking for con or considering conventional credit uh, for a borrower, along, of course, with um, more of the requirements that have to fit the eligibility requirement of the SBA, and, and these are posted on the SBA website, and I'm going to go through them as well. First, as you would expect, the company has to have healthy operating history. We typically look for two years of 
um, revenue generate, generation and profitable business that shows a demonstrated ability to, to pay back the borrowed money. Also because when you're looking at financing working capital for export reasons, we're basically using foreign receivables and inventory to uh, as collateral for these uh, financing facilities, which is right. typically an option that you don't have the conventional way. So we look for the company to be able to provide current AR aging and list of inventory to be used to come up with uh, sizing of the facility Per, per the monthly borrowing base. Also, the business has to be domiciled in the United States, so it cannot be domiciled overseas. And the company has to be able to furnish documents that prove that. Um, this is also an SBA requirement that the product must be exported from the US. Um, um, any owner who owns 20% or more of the borrowing entity must guarantee the loan facility and principals must be U.S. citizens or legal permanent residents. Um, the, 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 the other thing that we look for is that the company must meet the SBA small business standards, either by next code or alternative size standards. And the size standards, um, if, if, if a number of the companies on the phone don't know that, are available on the SBA website and we can follow up with the link to, to all the participants so that they, they are familiar with that. Um, the use of the proceeds cannot be used for financing um, US business. So um, it has to be used to finance um, foreign AR or support standby letters of credits serving as performance or, or bid bonds for work overseas. And the eligible AR can't exceed 180 days and must be shipped and invoiced in the US. This is, this is in general, I don't want to get into the nitty gritty right. details and confuse everybody, but if anybody has any questions, they can feel free to email you or contact you or email me and contact me. That's great, yes. Uh, exporting is not difficult. It's just a little different from selling domestically. So right. that's how I like to present right. it because people might feel overwhelmed by all the, all, but it's really not that hard. I mean, you know, Canada, which people don't realize is an export. And those, exactly. are some of the, those are some of the questions we always ask uh, companies, you know, do you export? Do you indirect export? So I think, yeah, that, that's, uh, that's very good. Uh, it's important for people to know at least the basics, because you're always going to talk to people, you know, your, your relationship manager, you're going to talk to to somebody like me or somebody at the SBDC or something. So with that, that said, so let me just give you a little overview of what the SBA has, uh, what the SBA has available for exporting. Again, we're just part of the uh, the supply chain of financing uh, for uh, for exporting. So we basically have three key programs, and basically these three key programs, it's for for the lenders like a Truist to make a good credit better, to enhance the credit because there's an export component to it. So. Our first program, which oh, I'm sorry, the, our three programs are a mix of loans and working capital and business acquisition. But let's let's just go quickly to uh, through them. So our and, and it's it's also good for small companies, medium sized companies, and and bigger companies. So our first uh, our first program uh, that's available for a lender and for uh, the small business is what we call Export Express. This is a, a program that goes up to $500,000. Uh, it can be used as a term loan or it can be used as working capital. Uh, this is where the lender can use what they, they already do a domestic equivalent called uh, Express. So they will already know how to do this program. So the added benefit here is that Export Express up to $350,000 is a 90% guarantee for the lender. And from 350 to 500,000, it's a 75% guarantee to the lender. And just a footnote on that, our programs have the highest guarantee percentage of any SBA program. Very important when you talk to your lender. Again, the SBA doesn't finance you directly, the small business. We help provide support to the lender so the lender can lend to you for your export activities. So we have this Export Express, which is the small working capital. It can be a loan, it can be for, for anything related to your export activities. So you can be, you know, you want you want you want to buy a, a piece of equipment for $75,000. 
you got this program I'm available. sorry i'm sorry to interrupt but if no anyone problem. is on the phone please make sure you mute yourself making sure that you are muted thank you so much so that they enjoy it so the much they're already system. driving to the sbdc that's great <laughs> Okay, so, so we have this ITL, which is flexible, and it's, it's a neat little program. So then we have our second, uh, our second product, which is a term loan. It's called the International Trade Loan. Now, if, you're, if, if you've done SBA lending in the past uh, on a domestic side, you know the famous 7A. Well, this is a 7A for those that have uh, an angle uh, of exporting. Now, it, again, it, it's a term loan. So you let's say, for instance, you know, you need a two million dollar piece of equipment. Oh, I must backtrack a second. This goes up to five million dollars with a ninety percent guarantee. So you you the you have up to four point five million dollars in in a guarantee. So let's say you have to buy a piece of equipment, two million dollar equipment, because you know you're 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 losing sales because your your forty year old equipment is just not giving you the right margins. So if you buy a new piece of equipment, your margins are going to be great, and you're going to expand capacity, and everything's going to go great. So that's why this international trade loan is a, is a, is a really deep program. Again, it's something that the bank already knows how to do. It's just we just add a little bit uh, of uh, some characteristics because of course there has to be an export involved or there has to be export activity, right? So you could, you're, you're an exporter. And, and so th this is good for, again, for, for cap, uh, capital uh, purchases. It could be for permanent working capital. And also a new, a new characteristic of this program is business acquisition. So for instance, uh, you know, you're, you're, you're in, uh, in San Antonio, Texas, and you want to buy a business in Miami, Florida, because you see that, you know, you have complementary, you know, you might be the exporter of heavy equipment. And then in, in Miami, you find a, uh, a, uh, a mechanic, uh, you know, a garage that helps fix some equipment to, to change the, uh, you know, change the engine a little bit from T3 to T4 or T4 to T3. And you say, hey, this would be great if I could buy them. We can help. Uh, 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 we can help you with that business acquisition through this international trade loan. So it's a very powerful tool. And then the, the third program we have, it's called the Export Working Capital Program, which is our marquee program. And again, just like it says, Export Working Capital. This goes up to five billion. So the difference between the first one I mentioned to you, Export Express, is that one only goes up to five hundred thousand. And then with the with the Export Express, it kind of, you know, it provides. Uh, uh, it provides you with either a single transaction or if you have multiple transactions. So again, these three programs are good for the small company, the medium-sized company, and the, 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 you know, the company that's a little bit bigger. So right. just by giving you that foundation, Noah, Noah, from a bank perspective, again, which is very important for, for our audience to hear, what do you think of the, the working capital? How is that important for you to assess a company's uh, you know, goal to export? So, so working capital Ed, is extremely important for a company, not just to keep the doors open and pay uh, their employees and vendors on daily basis and keep the lights on, mm -hmm. but it's also extremely important for growth. So I'll capitalize on something that Trey mentioned in the first part of this webinar when he said, you don't put all your eggs basically in one basket. So right. exports is helps diversify um, your client base and helps the business uh, weather economic um, cycles and, and, and fluctuations in the domestic and world economies. And by making sure that a business owner has a working capital that works for them and is able to finance that growth, um, it's they, they're basically investing in their growth um, or in, in, in their future growth. So, for example, the, the working capital um, 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 can, can be satisfied or can be augmented. The, the company's working capital, if you want to get a sense of what how much working capital you have as a business owner, you can subtract your current short term liabilities from your current short term assets. The way to augment your working capital is by getting lines of credit that will finance the temporary working capital. And right. by the SBA guaranteeing to the lenders 
90% of these loan facilities, they're basically unlocking the cash flow potential and expanding the borrowing base that's, yeah, that's, and making us able to extend more money right. to the borrower than what we would that's, typically do. Right, that's exactly why we're here, why you, right? we're part of the, oh, no, absolutely, no, this is great. Bankers like to talk, right? Know how we like to talk. And so I just wanted to just go quickly uh, through the, uh, you know, we, we've seen we've seen changes with, with, with COVID and so forth. But I think right now I'd just like to pr present to you that, you know, we're all part of the international ecosystem. You know, we have our resource partners, we have commercial service, we have the state, we have the SBDCs. Just use us, just keep us in mind. You have that resource, like the companies that you heard before, we're, we're there for you. You know, we've got the STEP program, awesome STEP program, you know, that's very flexible and you, you heard the example. So I don't really have to rehash what everybody else has said. I just want you guys to know out there that, you know, there's a lot of information that's out there for you, for you to, uh, so for you to get, uh, get going exports. So I'd like to turn it back to, to Leroy uh, now and take us to the Q&A. Adelante.